Welcome to Boston, New England. It is Memorial Day weekend. That means we are in Foxborough, Massachusetts, Gillette Stadium for the National Lacrosse Championships. Fans are filing in. It should be a great day. Welcome in, everybody. I'm Matt McConnell, your host and sideline reporter today on CBS College Sports. Keep it right here all day long. We've got the Division Three and Division II Men's National Championships. And a little bit later on, we'll go down to Towson, Maryland for the Division I Women's Championship between that great Northwestern team taking on North Carolina. But up next, Division Three, it is Cortland taking on Gettysburg. Two teams, it is their moment for the nation's oldest sport and the fastest game on two feet. History is defined by moments. And it is one moment, frozen in time, that these teams want to capture. That instant in the game, when the tables turn, when the opportunity is ripe, when the weight of the team falls to the shoulders of one, and he rises to the occasion. For Gettysburg, will a new champion emerge? Or for Cortland, will a new dynasty begin? One game. One title. Their moment is now. for the national championship of Division Three. Welcome to Gillette Stadium, everybody. CBS College Sports is proud to present the national championship of Division Three. It is Cortland today taking on Gettysburg. Let's take a look at the brackets and how they got here. Gettysburg with a big win over Stevenson and Cortland all over Middlebury. That sets up today's final, Gettysburg and Cortland. And welcome in, everybody. Well, Cortland, they're going to try to get it done. They haven't been able to bring home the national championship since 2006. And for Gettysburg, well, they've got that 50-year tradition of lacrosse, but they have never won a national championship game. Let's send it up to the booth. The gentlemen calling today's action are Jason Chandler and Paul Carcaterra. Thank you very much, Matt and Kark. Matt is absolutely right. We have a great matchup here in the D3 championship game. Well, when you look at it, you have a team in Cortland who's come up short the last couple years in the national championship game. And then on the other side, Gettysburg starving for their first national championship. Well, let's start with Cortland, their fourth straight national championship game appearance. In 06, they won it, beating Salisbury 13-12 in overtime. Then in 07, they lose to Salisbury 15-9, Coach Bevel's first season. 08, they lose to Salisbury again, 19-13. 09, they're riding an 11-game winning streak into the title game. And this season, their Mr. Everything is midfielder Chris DeLuca. Well, this kid is sensational. One of the best face-off men in all of Division III lacrosse. But it's his ability to start offense from the face. He has over 20 goals and over 20 assists. He can break down a defense. This kid is exciting to watch. Well, Cortland's opponent today is Gettysburg. They're red hot. They've won 14 in a row, but the season didn't start so well, which led their head coach, Hank Jancic, to give the squad an interesting nickname at the beginning of the year. We had lost three pretty big games on the road early in the season, and uh, kids were pretty down, so we tried to make light of it, and I called us the Gettysburg Possums because they get getting killed on the road. And then we finally won a, an away game, and then we won another away game. And then we actually beat the number one team in the country on the road. And then last week, we beat the number one team in the country again. And they're led by a spectacular senior, the long pole, Tommy Keogh. He's a first team All-American, player of the year with the long pole. He ignites the transition game for Gettysburg. He's a lockdown defender. This kid is special. He's sensational. In 2006, Cortland was crowned national champs after an epic game. The next two seasons, the Red Dragons made it to the title game only to see their championship hopes dashed by Salisbury. Today for Cortland, it's Gettysburg trying for their first ever national title while Cortland looks to establish a new dynasty next. The NCAA Division III Men's Lacrosse Championship on CBS College Sports is brought to you by Coca-Cola Zero. 
real Coke taste and zero calories. Matt McConnell, thank you very much. We are here in a jam-packed Foxborough Stadium, Gillette Stadium in Foxborough for the Division III National Championship game. Let's head between the pipes, look at the goaltending matchup. For Gettysburg, it's Zach Fershman, the third team All-American. And for Cortland, Matt Hippenbecker made six saves in the semifinals against Middlebury. That's the matchup between the pipes. Head coach for Cortland is Steve Bevel. He's in his third season, three times he's been to the national title game. Still looking for that first national championship. You see the numbers, 21 seasons overall as a head coach. Still looking for that crown as we get set for face-off for the Division III National Championship game. It's Stanton for Gettysburg and DeLuca for Cortland. Procedure, white ball! And the Red Dragons get the first possession of the 2009 Division III National Championship game. A lot of times you'll see when there's a top face-off man like DeLuca, the opposition, sometimes some nerves come into play. A little bit of a jump there on that first face-off for Gettysburg. <laughs> the Red Dragons 18-2, their fourth straight national championship game appearance. The last two seasons, they've lost to Salisbury. No Salisbury this year. It's Gettysburg riding a 14-game winning streak, coming in at 16-3, settling in defensively. This offense right now doing it a lot of different ways. They lost some marquee players from a year ago, headlined by Ryan Heath, the first team All-American. A lot of fresh faces for Cortland in 2009. This is DeLuca right now with the ball. He's the guy we touched on earlier. Not only does he win 70% of his face-offs, but he can score some goals and he can put some assists on the board as well. Next time. That puts Next a lot time, of pressure. Sean on the Gettysburg defense. Could start that offense right from the face, creating opportunities. Miziak down the alley, save, early stop by Fershman. Miziak the first shot of the game, and Fershman gets the first save. Here comes Gettysburg in transition in a hurry. O'Donnell feeds the crease, and a score! Gettysburg on the board first. John Reichert, the junior, gives the Bullets a 1-0 lead. Well, Reichert recognizes a near man slide from Gettysburg. You don't want to slide near man. You're leaving that pipe wide open, but Reichert takes another step, doesn't shoot immediately when he gets the pass. That little hitch and that extra step gives him the angle he needs. Reichert, a junior from Englewood, Colorado. Gone away, gone away. 33 goals in the season. Only four assists, though. He's a flat finisher, and he finished there along the crease. I think for Gettysburg, none of these players have played on a stage this large, where the Cortland seniors have been in this game all four years. Gettysburg. No championship experience for the men in orange. A fast start, I think, was critical. Throughout the game, you'll be able to hear from the officials. They are mic'd this afternoon, so that will give us a great perspective as to what's going on out on the field. You can hear some of the players picked up in those microphones and the officials giving their instructions to both teams and making their calls. Shot and score in the top left corner. 45, for Miziak, second time's the charm, and we're tied at one. Well, Brandon Miziak was one of those players last year that did contribute for the Cortland Red Dragons. This is a nice alley dodge. He uses his strength, his speed, to keep that angle right there. Just a mismatch size-wise. Big, strong, righty shot there for Miziak. Miziak, a junior from New Hartford, New York. 27 tallies on the season, 35 total points. He's played in all 20, and now 21 of the Red Dragons contest. One for one, boys. Portland wins another face-up. They settle in, and we'll take a look at the Red Dragons starting lineups. Well, Toto's been 
huge for the Red Dragons, leading the team in goals. Touched on DeLuca, Joey Morgan, an outside shooter. He breaks the defense down. He's led them all year long, and Luke Lemon, he's the pulse of that defense. Portland turned it over. Kyle McGrath brings it into the attack zone for Gettysburg. As the Bullets will settle down, and we'll take a look at their lineups as well. Here's Gettysburg. We'll look for Gettysburg, Pucci, and Brody on the attack. Those are two guys that contribute. They both like to hold the ball, quarterback-like players. We saw Reichert hit the back of the net on that first shot. McGrath has had a huge year for the Bullets. Reichert again, he has two. Gettysburg has two, and it's two one Bullets. Well, Jason, you mentioned this kid can flat out score. Thank you, sir. Loves that left side of the field there. Job, sir. And that's great recognition. It's actually Riker was on the screen there, the shot and the goal by Kyle McGrath. Kyle McGrath does a nice job selling the inside of the field to get back Down. to that righty angle. So Riker to McGrath. And Gettysburg wins its first face off. That's a good sign there for the Bullets. You know, Portland has a serious advantage. Gettysburg, as a team, wins only about 46% of their face offs. DeLuca wins 70%. percent we take a look here at the replay. Yeah, that's a questionable one. They're going to get him for a push with possession. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Push. Maybe a little bit too far from the back right there on the push. You got to stay in front of the man when you're pushing out. The first look at the man advantage now for Gettysburg. They'll be up a man for the next 30 seconds. Gettysburg scores 27% of the times when they're up a man. This shot doesn't quite make it to the net. Then it bounces. Out of Hippenbecker's no. stick, no harm though for Cortland as they're able to scoop up the ground ball. Hippenbecker had it for a moment, almost put it in his own cage there when it popped out of his stick. The telling stat on that last possession was the Cortland man down defense. Stopping the opposition at 87%. Stay off his back, stay off That is a back, great gentlemen. unit, that man down defense. Specialty teams, one of the strong points for Cortland in 2009. Eric Hera. Defensive midfielder behind the cage with the left hand cradle. Circles in front, his shot is stopped by Firstman. And Gettysburg will get another possession if they can clear. So far, end to end action. Neither team able to, uh, afraid to shoot the ball right now. Good back and forth Division Three championship lacrosse. And I mentioned earlier all the new faces for Cortland. They have their own identity in 2009, losing all those seniors from a year ago. They're doing it different ways. Specialty teams, ground balls, great face-off play by DeLuca. You do all those little things, throwing some goaltending, right back to where you belong, a national championship run. O'Donnell with possession, backs it out. This is Andrew Ryan up top. Ryan, part of the second line midfield, a sophomore. Back to O'Donnell. Second team All-American with hands, possession. Boys, Double hands. teamed, immediately retreats towards the sideline around the perimeter. It will go again, Ryan touches. Solid defense here by Cortland as they press out. Now Patrick Cole with the right hand cradle. He'll go from goal line extended. Dodges past his man, gets to the cage. He's stripped from behind, it's loose in front. Ball, Neither team able to get possession. Now Gettysburg has it with O'Donnell. He'll back towards the far sideline. Picked up by Tom Burke, number eight for Cortland. O'Donnell, nice move to the cage. Couldn't quite get in front of the net. Now up top, shot and Hi. save. It actually tipped off the post a little bit as well. Hippenbecker's got a piece of that one. Ryan had a good look in front. Let's take a look at this. Looked like a bit of stick end. Some pipe, actually pipe first. pipe first. Yeah, and then it came back and hit the stick. Good possession here so far for Gettysburg. 
keeping the pressure on Cortland with their second line midfield out there with the exception of O'Donnell who has the ball right now. Up top it's Cole. Takes the pick from McGrath, loses possession. It's on the ground. Cole picks it back up. Checked by Birch. Runs by Birch. Cortland slides. Gettysburg couldn't find its way to the net. This is a well-balanced offense for Gettysburg. You know, on attack with Pucci and Brody. McGrath right, at the boy, midfield. Do it right, do it right. And O'Donnell, those are guys with double-digit assists can create opportunities for their teammates, break that defense down. When you have the balance in front of the cage and behind, this is a tough offense. Pull down the right wing, moves it back up top, swung to the left side. Shot goes Good. over the cage and out of bounds, backed up by Gettysburg. They'll Step maintain on. possession. Joe Brody backs it up and he'll get his first touch of the afternoon. The attackman from Bethesda, Maryland. He has a short stick matchup here. Goes right to the cage, feeds up top. Find the hands, my friend, O'Donnell find the hands. takes a whack. You hear the officials in the background saying, find Easy, the hands. Easy, let him run on the crease. Let him run. In lacrosse, if you're gonna whack away, you have to be going for stick. You heard the ref, find the hands. It's fair game when there's two hands on the stick to whack that bottom hand. When the offensive player has one hand on the stick. You have to be going towards that stick. That's why you heard the ref there, find the hands. Cross field feed, Reichert had an alley, elects not to shoot, he'll back it out to McGrath. Kyle McGrath, where's the number four? He has one today along with Reichert. Those are the two for Gettysburg. Miziak, the tally for Portland. After a quick start in terms of scoring, the pace is slowed here midway through the first quarter of the Division Three National Championship game. And just like that, Gettysburg is back on the board. It's McGrath again. Well, you're show, showing a lot of diverse play out of Kyle McGrath. We saw a nifty move in front of the cage on his first goal. His second one, he inverts, takes the Cortland defenseman behind the cage out of his normal element. Last guys, when you see when me you're step playing on, midfield you defense, you're used to playing the top. McGrath recognizes that, makes a sweet move around that goal line extended. What a huge tournament McGrath is having. That's 12 goals and four assists so far in the 0-9 tourney. Cortland back the other way. They respond with a goal. Brian Kroll, after some nice pass work, Cortland back to within one. Well, when you have a face-off man who can win at 70%, the nerves Start coming into play for Gettysburg, trying to get every advantage and jumping that whistle. You see right off the referee's whistle, that transition play. Great ball movement. They find the backside, which is wide open. And then with the finish, Kroll just sticks it. DeLuca wins another one cleanly. That shot whistles wide. DeLuca got it to De Stefano. Out, that is going go to be George. a huge advantage George. all afternoon long. If Portland can not only win those type of faceoffs, but win them cleanly. Long looping pass. Gettysburg will try to clear and look at Portland's keys to the game. Well, for these seniors to win a second national championship, get Joey Morgan rolling when he's breaking down a defense from up top with that outside laser. He stretches it and gives inside opportunities for guys like Hoda. The freshman is so crafty inside in the crease area. Wraparound shot is saved by Hippenbecker. It bounces behind the cage and scooped up by Justin Schneidman. Let's now look at the keys for Gettysburg. Well, we know Gettysburg, they need that early start. Not used to the big stage. I think Coach Jancic has to be happy with the way they're playing in this first quarter and tie up DeLuca, do whatever you can to make it a 50-50 draw, maybe even put a long stick in there. You can't let him start transition from the faceoff. Well, I'd say so far they've started very well, the but they guys. Out have of the box no now. answers the right box. now for DeLuca. Well, he's a guy who can push it in front. He can clamp and rake and hit it to his wing guys. You have a faceoff specialist who has one or more prominent moves like DeLuca has. It's really hard to match up against a player like that. 
Dano Lynch with hey, possession. Hey, moves it along to O'Donnell. Approaching the five-minute mark of the first quarter. Shots even right now between these teams. Gettysburg with a one-shot advantage. And Gettysburg with a one-goal advantage at 3-2. That shot lost some steam before it got to the crease and Hippenbecker is able to scoop it up. Good collapsing defense, Lemon takes possession. Luke Lemon, senior captain on the defense for Portland. First team All-American, four year starter. Matt Noble clears and moves it along. Portland will get its offensive personnel out onto the field. Joey Morgan has it. Look at Morgan, the first team All-American senior out of Putnam Valley. I talked to his high school coach a couple weeks ago, Brian Kuzma. He's not shocked by the performance Morgan has had here in his senior year. Such a work ethic, and the kid just never stops driving. And tries to achieve perfection. I know his high school coach was quite proud of his accomplishments on the Division III. Here's Morgan saved by Firstman. Those are some pretty big compliments coming from a guy like Kuzma. So pretty darn good lacrosse player in his own right. Kuzma was a first team All-American Defender of the Year in 1997 for Johns Hopkins. And maybe Morgan picked his brain on how he could beat a defense in high school. Two, three. Gettysburg has some trouble there. They tried to get a shot off. It was deflected. They do keep possession. Josh Reichert circling behind the cage, backs it away. Morgan caught back on defense, he's guarding Reichert. Now it's Noble pressing out defensively for Portland. Nice feed in front and the score! Pucci puts it home! Four to Gettysburg in front, Pucci the senior. Well, if you look at the off-ball play uh, by Pucci, this is a great shot of it. Just scrapes and backdoors his man. Looked like the Cortland defense wanted to defend Pucci high. He scrapes low. Great awareness by the senior attackman from Ridgewood. Pucci now has five goals to go along with four assists in the NCAA tournament. Gettysburg wins a faceoff. That's a big faceoff victory for the Bullets after going up 4-2. The Bullets, they attempt to clear as we visit with Matt McConnell down on the sideline. Matt. Well, you know what, guys? I was looking at Steve Bevel when it was 2-1 when Gettysburg got their second goal. He just kind of shrugged his shoulders saying, is it going to be another day like that in terms of goaltending? But I don't know if he's so upset with Eric Hippenbacher as he is with the inside defense uh, that Cortland is showing right now. Well, that's a good point, Matt. You look at Hippenbecker, it's critical that he has a big game here today. But more importantly, that defense has to tighten up. That's not on the goalie when you're getting backdoor cut like that from that Gettysburg offense. That's on the defense. Cortland calls timeout. They want to talk things over, trailing by two. It's 4-2 Gettysburg in front. For two Gettysburg, if you look at this last goal by Pucci, it's the backdoor cut will roll it right here from this end zone angle. A nice drive, we'll freeze it right there. You see right here, the Cortland defense is caught ball watching. Pucci recognizes that, cuts backdoor, roll for a great, call that a little shade cut. Gets the nifty pass and sticks it home. Pucci, third team All-American, leads the team in goals tied for first in points. Has one here in the national championship game, the senior from Ridgewood, New Jersey. Always taught defensively, head on a swivel, man ball. You always have to recognize whether your man is and where the ball, Cortland caught ball watching. For all the latest news, stats, polls, and more, visit NCAA.com. NCAA.com is the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. This is the Division III National Championship men's lacrosse on CBS College Sports. Gettysburg 4, Cortland 2. 
Jason Chandler, Paul Carcaterra, Matt McConnell. Glad to be with you here. Great day of lacrosse on the CBS College Sports. We have the Division II National Championship coming your way right after this from Foxborough. Flag flies. And another man advantage for Gettysburg. They didn't do so well the first time. But they'll get another chance. We have a technical foul. Nine wide, 30 seconds, hold. 30 second hold on Justin Schneiden, but look at the check beforehand. Call that a horse heck. That is some check there by Justin Schneidman. Horse hook check, but then the hold that afterwards. That is a new one. A horse heck? Horse check. Horse check, okay. Horse hook. Call it a horse hook check. Horse hook check. That's a mouthful. I'm going to leave that one to you. I don't think I can pull that one off. Say it 10 times fast. Not, not going to happen here. Right now, Gettysburg gets Pucci with possession on the man advantage. Mention how tough Portland's been. As that shot whistles wide, will stay with the bullets. Only 13% of the time that an opposing team score against the Red Dragons when they are down a man. And that's why right there with saves like that by Hippenbecker went low to make that stop. That was a clean open look. Hippenbecker makes the save, but another turnover for Cortland. And Gettysburg will keep it. After a great save like that, the last thing you want to do is give Gettysburg another opportunity on a blown clear, negates the brilliant save by Hickenbecker. Just over a minute to go, first quarter. This is the start that Gettysburg was looking for, Clark. You mentioned in your keys, they're up by two there. With possession, they've neutralized DeLuca a little bit. Cross, crease, shot, did that go in? It looked like it hit the back of the net, perhaps it was Hickenbecker's stick. Joe Brody celebrated. He had that quick stick right along the crease cork, and the back of the net did move. I'm not sure what happened here. We'll look at the eye box down in the corner and see. Regardless, Hippenbecker, yeah, he makes that save. Brilliant save by Hippenbecker, robbing the Gettysburg offense from their fifth goal. He's in, the ball, the ball. You saw the back of the net move there a little bit. And Brody Just celebrated as if it went in, maybe tried by one, but perhaps Hippenbecker made contact with the cage or something. Well, Hippenbecker went from pipe to pipe. When he moved over, he brought his stick. I think the head of the stick hit the net first. That shot goes Please. over the net and out of bounds. It will stay Pick it up, step on, sir. They have 14 seconds to work with here. Try to draw within one at the close of the first quarter. in front, knocked the to the ball. ground, good the defense. Ball. Gettysburg Easy. swarms, Tim Purpose, 42, on the coverage along the sideline. And that ends the first quarter. Another good start for Gettysburg, a plus 46 this season in terms of their first quarter margin of scoring. The Bullets up 4-2 looking for their first ever Division III National Championship from Foxborough, Massachusetts. Hey, Matt. Good start today for Gettysburg Lacrosse in their 45th season of men's lacrosse. Great winning percentage, 66%. 23 straight winning seasons. This year, they're 16 and three. Six straight Centennial Conference titles. 19 D3 tourney appearances, three title games. They've never won a national championship. You're looking right now at our steady cam here on CBS College Sports, the first time ever in Division II, Division III national championship history that we've had access like this on the field with the steady cam, bringing you right inside all the action. It's going to be a great look all afternoon long. Yeah, that's an incredible look right there. Down. Up close and personal, Division Three National Championship. DeLuca at it again. DeLuca, quick shot on the left wing from Portland, bounces straight up into the air after the DeLuca clean faceoff win. Stick and gloves, stick and gloves. Portland settles in, and with more on Cortland, we visit again with Matt McConnell on the sideline. Yeah, guys, I was in the Cortland huddle at the uh, quarter break, and, and they were talking. Steve Bevel, their head coach, said, you know what, let's just settle it down, let's communicate a little bit better, and if we don't have it inside, pull it back out. And then one of the assistants jumped in and said, nerves, guys, forget about them. Let's play lax. Well, Gettysburg playing some lax right there defensively. A brilliant stick check gets the ball back to the bullets. 
they will settle in offensively. Now step on. The eye box pops in, and Clark, this is vintage stick check right here. Well, you're looking at the Division Three National Player of the Year, Tommy Kao. Oh my God, that is an incredible check. Back check action knocks the stick out of the Cortland offensive player's hand. The athletic ability, too. We mentioned him at the beginning of the broadcast, number 15, so keep an eye on him. First time ever someone from Gettysburg won D3 Player of the Year, and anytime time a long way. stick go, midfielder go, wins the overall chance, player of the year, you know he's Orange, doing step something back, pretty step good. Back nine, nine. Ho, ho, okay, ho. It's the athletic ability, too. Half a step. Presses out, takes chances. When you have feet like that, you're able to recover. You press your man out, typically, outside of that restraining box. The athletic ability of number 15 is really something special to watch. This is O'Donnell down the right wing. Trying to get it back up top, doesn't have to. He's checked by Burke. Now straight away, Dano Lynch, the sophomore. Lynch feeds the crease. Brody couldn't get a shooting angle. We'll go around behind the net. Get out, good job, get off his back, get off his back. Here the officials telling Lemon to get off Reichert's back. We mentioned there, Mike. Hey, hey, boys, do it right, do it right. McGrath circles behind the net, takes a whack control in the face. Control stay in control, gentlemen, stay in control. Schneidman strips to the ground, McGrath gets it back, tried to find Reichert, who was camped out right on the crease, but it hit the back of that. Portland in transition. Division three national championship game from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts, here on CBS College Sports. Gettysburg against Portland. 4-2 bullets in front. Jason Chandler, Paul Carpenter upstairs. Matt McConnell is our host and our sideline reporter. And Portland is on the board again. Mike Tota, the freshman, is first of the championship game, the Red Dragons are back to within one. 49th of the season for the freshman. What a pleasant surprise. Mike Tota has been the best inside shooter on the team. It's no surprise he capitalizes on that opportunity. Tota, Johnny on the spot right here off of a great feed. From the senior, Joey Morgan, a nice look in the steady cam. Following Morgan, when you're Joey Morgan, the Gentlemen, best Dodger, the you're going to attract that kind of Down. defensive look from Gettysburg. He recognizes that, dodges with his head up, and finds the freshman. Another face-off win for Portland. Joda, the freshman, and a hat trick against Middlebury in the semifinals. And now we asked Steve Bevel, did you expect this out of Chota coming in as a freshman to put up almost 50 goals, now 49 goals in the season? And he said flat out, no, we did not expect this from Chota. He's been a pleasant surprise, more than a pleasant surprise. You're getting 50 goals from a freshman. That's about as good as you can expect. And right now, Gettysburg has the matchup with Keo guarding Joey Morgan. That last time Morgan saw the short stick, went right after it. Now, interesting, Matt McConnell was inside the, the huddle for Portland, and they were talking about nerves in that huddle. And in, you remember the Division Three championship game last year, they started slowly. Here today, they start slowly. All week long, we were talking about they have the experience coming into this game, but it seems like they were off to the slow start. And Gettysburg, this team, this particular Gettysburg get team, has been here. They get seem very together. comfortable. Well, they have the experience of the big weekend. These players, all the seniors, juniors, and sophomores, have been to the Final Four event. But Coach Bevel made it clear, only three or four of these guys have big game experience. Hirschman makes a relatively routine save, pops the rebound up to himself, and Gettysburg will attempt to clear. The Bullets have been very good on the clear here this afternoon. One, two. No mental mistakes in that type of turnover so far for Gettysburg. Portland had a few. Right now, the Bullets enjoying a one-goal lead as they'll take possession. This is Pucci who has one today. The Bullets get their offensive midfield out onto the field. This Gettysburg wait for him, offense wait, wait, is really wait, hard wait, to Thank you, hone in on if you're the defensive team, in this case, Portland. Seven players with over 20 points. That's balance. They average
average over 11 goals per game. And really, they've averaged more than that during their 14-game winning streak. We said at the top, they started two and three since that start, including a loss to Portland. They've won 14 in a row, and they're red hot coming into this game. What a turnaround, though, after losing three out of your first five games, go on a 14-win streak right here into the national championship. Brody, nice feed in front, good defense. I think it was Morgan who got there first, along with Cody Hoyt. Hoyt, a long stick no midi, number seven, home. and Morgan, 19, stay here, stay here. stuck on the defensive he end, no, he collapsed up. after he the nice like feed from Brody to deflect that yeah, shot before it got <clears throat> into Hippenbecker. Right, yeah, that was a good up. look at it right there. Morgan just used his stick, known to be an offensive midfielder, caught on the defensive end. <laughs> Get that horn on lacrosse. Eligible to substitute. Coach Bevel wants to use his offensive player, Morgan, on that end. Not waste his energy in wind on the defensive end. Up top, O'Donnell has room to work here. Guarded loosely by Lemon, moves it over to his right. Brody with possession. Brody is their assist guy, 27. So watch for some offense to go through Brody. First in the team in assist. He has 31 on the season. Find it, find it. They try to feed Brody there, it doesn't work. Ball's kicked, still loose. Gettysburg will keep it for the moment. Oh, yeah, boys, yeah, 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 say hold, yeah. and it's heading towards Portland. Big possession for the Red Dragons. We've seen a lot of unsettled goals. Not too much as a six on six set for Portland. They really haven't had possession much in this game. A bit more low scoring than you anticipated early on here, Clark? You know, for a first and second quarter, not really. These teams are getting their championship jitters out right now. I Knock expect much Knock more scoring, off. at least in the second half. One, get off of him. One, let him move. But I think Gettysburg's doing a real nice job of kind of negating the fact of DeLuca being such an exceptional faceoff man. They're countering that with ball control. Substitutions offensively here for Portland. The second line midfield of Mulvaney, Duffy, and Dutkowski on the field along with Greg Wright, a fourth attacking. This is Jay DeStefano in front, circles to his left. Can't find an alley to shoot. Now he does and misses wide to the right. It's backed up by Mulvaney, who freshman. He'll restart along the end line. Mulvaney out of Carthage, New York. The home of the Powell brothers, Josh Kaufman, Jason Kaufman. Some of the game's best players in the 90s and this decade come from Portland. Bounce shot saved by Firstman Tota from 13 yards away. And Firstman has started hot between the pipes for the Bullets. The Firstman, a third team All American. Coach Jantic. Made it very clear that he's playing oh. best lacrosse now. We'll see this last save by Fershman. Good ball movement. Tota showing his range. Fershman just does a great job of tracking that shot. Stick on stick with Tota. You know, if you look at a bounce shot in a game like this, playing on this artificial turf, Every bounce is true. I think it's a goalie's advantage when you're bouncing the ball on a surface like this. Noble trying to go behind the back with a pass. Dangerous play, and here comes Gettysburg with an opportunity. Pucci was open in front. They don't get it to him. Instead, they try to feed Reichert, and it's down on the turf. Not sure if there was no angle to get it to Pucci, but he was by himself right on the crease. And a push against Gettysburg gives it back to Portland, so golden opportunity goes by the boards for the Bullets. That was a great look for Portland. A lot of times for an offensive player, you're thinking goal before you even catch the ball. I think that was the case for Pucci. Tom Burke moves it behind the net. Burke, defensive mini, will head out. At the bottom of your screen as Portland Substitutes its offensive midfield back out of the field, approaching six minutes to go. 
in the first half of the Division III National Championship game on CBS College Sports. As one might expect, the history of this game, it's a close one. Portland with the ball, down by one. Kroll looking for room to shoot. Ball checked Easy out now, good, good, keep going, play the ball. That's good, that's good. That pass goes to nobody in particular. Miziak panicked a little bit, I think, there. Was feeling the heat to defensively and just sort of threw it up the grabs and nobody home for Portland gives the ball back to Gettysburg. I don't know if Miziak thought he needed to get it in the box or what the case was there, but a blown opportunity for the Red Dragons. Ground ball even between these two teams, 16 apiece. As Gettysburg takes possession. And here we see the tempo slow a bit as we get to the five minute mark of the NCAA Division III National Championship from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts. Here on CBS College Sports, Jason Chandler, Paul Carcaterra, Matt McConnell, glad to be with you as Gettysburg has a 4-3 lead over Portland. Well, the Red Dragons take it away and take it in transition. Burke with the ball moves it along. That was an outstanding ground ball by the junior, Tom Burke. One of those d midi guys for Portland, doing all the little things. Joey Morgan checks into the game, immediately gets possession. Morgan right now, look for him to isolate. Morgan to his right, to the net, behind the back, is stopped by Fershman. It's loose behind the cage. Neither ah! team able to gain possession. Push this way, bring it here, bring it here. Push against Cortland, gives it to Gettysburg. A look at the shot. Right, boys, well, when you go ball, behind the right back, right you increase right your back angle. Up, 38, 38, ball, driving ball, right righty, right almost oh, like right you're here. shooting lefty, but that time, Joey Morgan won too many steps. Even with the behind the back, added advantage of increasing the angle. Way too late on that rip. Seven stops on the afternoon for Fershman. It's cliche, but anytime you're looking to win a national championship, you need your goalie to play well so far. Fershman is doing that. Good defense. Lemon picks up the ground ball. The defensive intensity picking up for both squads. <laughs> Para has it right now. Para, sophomore from Baldwinsville, New York. And Portland will set up offensively. Low scoring affair early in this one. It started back and forth very early in the first quarter. Now the pace in terms of goal scoring is really slowed here. You know what's interesting? These last two offensive possessions for Portland have not seen the senior player of the year, Tommy Keogh on the field for Gettysburg. I wonder if he's banged up or hurt. That's two possessions in a row. You know Gettysburg wants him on the field as much as possible. Good point. Keep an eye on that for you. Get off that 10. We saw Keo make that fantastic stick check earlier in the game. And I haven't seen much of him since. Miziak, who has a goal today to the net. Scores! Brandon Miziak. Ties it at four. <laughs> Miziak inverting as well. We saw Gettysburg inverting against the Cortland defense. This time Miziak has his own little invert. A nice take. Goes after O'Donnell, known to be an offensive midfielder. I don't know how he sneaks that in right-handed. If he kept it in his left hand, he actually would have increased his angle, puts it back right, and sticks it. The junior ties the game at four with his second goal today.
4-4 thriller here in Foxborough, Gettysburg, and Cortland. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, we're going to take a look back at the semifinals of the men's Division I tournament yesterday. Some great matchups, and we'll also get the thoughts of the guys in the booth on the Division II matchup, which is coming up immediately following our D3 championship. Guys? Matt, thank you very much. Matt McConnell all over it down on the sidelines, in the huddles, at the desk, doing everything while Paul Carcaterra just leisurely sits back and looks at his monitor up here. <laughs> Matt's doing a fabulous job down there. With him on the sidelines, steady cam, and we got Tommy Keo back in the game. We're now we have shape. it all, yeah, now we have it all with Keo back in the game. Steady cam, Matt, Mc Matt McConnell, Tommy Keo. We don't need anything else here in the Division Three National Championship game. Tied at four, Gettysburg, Cortland, by the way, it's been a long time since Gettysburg has scored as Cortland wins another faceoff. 324 in the first. Pucci from Brody. Last time Gettysburg put one on the board. Since then, it's been all Cortland Second offensively. Blast, We're all square here. Two and a half to go in the second quarter. You know, Tommy Keo has the green light. Anytime he's playing defense on a Cortland player, you saw those crafty takeaway checks, even though he didn't get the ball there. Call that a kayak when you choke up the head of your stick. Coach, I'm gonna cheat in you. Look at me. Just wrapping around the offensive player's chest. Tommy Keo, flamboyant, exciting player to watch. This is Morgan here. Takes a bump, double teamed. As Kerpus comes over defensively. Morgan's forced to move it along. Hey, John! So far, Bales. we have the horse hook check, the kayak. Get it down, seven, down! You're going deep to your playbook here. That shot whistles wide. It's a national championship game. You gotta pull out all the stops. You know why they call it the kayak check, right? Well, I may, but the crowd at home may not. Why well, don't you explain well, it? Well, think about it. When you're in a kayak and you're using the paddles, you choke up, you use the other end. Same thing Keo did on that last check. When I'm in a kayak, I'm just worried about flipping over. Portland shot misses behind the net. The Red Dragons keep possession. It's DiStefano. Another nifty check as the ball hits the ground. Gettysburg pulling out all no, sorts of checks. He called when and Portland wisely he calls timeout. Coach stick. Bevel there. Stick. Now you want to stick. Let me see your stick, you, you. you can hear in the background some of the Gettysburg players questioning whether or not Cortland had possession. The officials say he does or they do. As we look back at this nice check here. That's a back check right there. We're seeing a lot of great defense out of Gettysburg and Cortland. That time, is John Orderna. Big 6-3 frame. So the defense getting it done for Gettysburg. Odierna there with a the check, but their backstop, Zach Fershman, has also been very strong between the pipes. Well, Fershman has the experience, especially in that 14-win run that Gettysburg had after the slow start. Fershman's been one of those players that you could pinpoint the reason behind that chart. Fershman saves it at about 55%. So it will be Cortland Ball out of the timeout. We're all tied at four, a buck 15 to go in the second quarter. I think in terms of the tightness of the game, this is where we expected maybe a few more goals. If you look at the steady cam following Zach Fershman out onto the field. So if you're Cortland here, Clark, do you hold it for a final shot or just take the first good one you see? You have to be careful, but ideally you want to get the last shot. You don't want Gettysburg to have another opportunity to get one. And had the momentum going into the second half. Run up your offense, take a little clock off right now. Typically start pressing around 20 seconds, 15 seconds. I always like to leave a little bit of time at the end, just in case you get a shot, you miss it, you have to back up, you retain possession, you can get another crack at it. Go for it twice instead of once. We're under a minute to go. DeLuca. Spins it behind the cage. Now here's Miziak had that nice goal a couple of minutes ago. Even the score Next at four. Time. Next time. They put it in the stick of their senior captain, Joey Morgan. Goes by his defender. 
It's Keo. That's a matchup to watch right there. Morgan v. Keo. Best midi in Division Three against the best defender and player in Division Three. That's the matchup you want to see in a national championship game. And that particular matchup goes to Keo. Bothered Morgan enough and forced an errant pass that goes out of bounds with 23 seconds to go in the second quarter. Gettysburg will clear and have time for one final shot. The Bullets need to get it towards the cage, but first, Coach Jancic will call timeout, set up play with 13 ticks left. I think this is a real big possession here at Clark because Gettysburg came out, they got the fast start that you said they needed in your keys. They were up 4-2. Since then, they've been on a big time scoring drought. Cortland scored two unanswered. The momentum has swung back to the Red Dragons, but here, if Gettysburg can tally one with just 13 seconds to go, that would be huge heading into the locker room. Well, for sure, and I think for Gettysburg, look for a lot of inside movement out of the team in orange. They're gonna try to force feed that crease area. I wouldn't be surprised if you see a lot of Brody in the beginning looking for guys like Pucci inside. Tommy Keogh. The Division Three Player of the Year. We spoke to him yesterday, and he told us what it would mean to the program to win a national championship for Gettysburg. Well, it's the biggest stage you can dream of, and this is what this is what you play for. You want to get here. It took us three attempts to get here through Final Fours, and we know how hard it is to get here, and we don't want to waste the opportunity. It would be a big part of the program and big for our college in general. Well, Keo has all the awards, D3 Player of the Year, D3 Long Stick Midi of the Year, First Team All-American, but you can bet the one he wants most of all is Division Three National Champion. And he said it best. You know how hard it is to get here. You look at some of the traditional programs, the Salisbury's, the Gettysburg's, the Cortland's, and then in Division One, Hopkins, Syracuse, Virginia, Princeton, Cornell, Every year, it's a new test, a new battle. Gettysburg needs to get a shot in a hurry. It comes up top. They're running out of time. Down to three seconds. Shot misses wide of the net. It was taken by Andrew Ryan. Just the second seven, shot of the seven. quarter for Gettysburg. Hey, hey, back, back, back. One more, one more, one more. You stay. About a half a second left here. Job, and they can't job. put it on net. A great first half, 4-4. Cortland and Gettysburg tied in the Division Three National Championship game. For Cortland, familiar territory since 2006. The Red Dragons have been outstanding. The 06 National Champs, four straight national title appearances, three conference championships, 13-2 in the NCAA tournament but two straight disappointing losses to Salisbury the past two seasons. And Cortland wants to get another national championship here today. They head to the locker room tied 4-4 with Gettysburg. And now we're joined by Cortland head coach Steve Bevel, coach Jason Chandler, Paul Carcaterra upstairs. Your thoughts on your team's performance the first half. Well, a little shaky there right off the start, you know. Uh, I think we uh, broke down a couple times on defense, and, uh, you know, a couple guys uh, uh, were a little excited, went after the ball a couple times. Uh, Gettysburg took advantage on it on a roll there with McGrath, and then uh, one on the backside there when our guy took his eye off the uh, cutter. But uh, second quarter, we really came on there, stopped him. Coach Paul Harkatar, great first half. I look at this Joey Morgan, Tommy Keogh matchup, best against the best. Do you go after Keogh or? Do you use Morgan in different sets? Because I think you do need your senior midfielder to get into the mix. No question. Joe's been an integral part of our offense all year, and we're going to continue to try to use him. And, uh, you know, you got to make Keel work, too. You can't just uh, you know, keep him off ball all the time. you got to make him work, use his legs a little bit, and, you know, we'll keep after it the second half. Coach, thanks very much, and good luck in the second half. All right, boys. That's Steve Bevel, head coach of the Portland Red Dragons. We are at the half. Division Three National Championship game, all tied at four. Looking forward to that matchup, but we have a good one right here in the Division Three National Championship game. 4-4, Gettysburg and Cortland. More after this from Foxborough. The NCAA Division Three Men's Lacrosse Championship on CBS College Sports is brought to you by AT&T. Your world delivered. 
Matt McConnell, thank you very much. Jason Chandler, Paul Carcaterra upstairs as Cortland heads back out onto the field. They are tied with Gettysburg 4-4 start of the third quarter of the Division III National Championship game. Cark, great back and forth first half. It started with Gettysburg. Well, Gettysburg came out roaring. O'Donnell gets Reichert involved early on in action. They started believing in each other early on. That's a nice take by McGrath. And Birchman on the other side making huge saves. Cortland finally got going with Joey Morgan feeding to the fantastic freshman Tota. And Mesiak right there sticks in that low angle shot all tied up at four. You see the numbers here in terms of statistics. Shot advantage for Cortland, and of course that face-off number 7-3 in favor of the Red Dragons. Cortland also winning the ground ball war. Well, we have Cortland and Gettysburg in this D3 National Championship game, but one familiar face not here this afternoon. With more on that, let's send it back to Matt. Yeah, Jason, I mean, you guys are almost melancholy, you know, not take nothing away from Gettysburg. What about Salisbury? I mean, they have been here, it seems like, every single year. They've had such a great run. I mean, you think back to the matchups that they've had with Cortland. In 2003, they defeated Middlebury to win the championship. They got by Nazareth in that 13-9 game in 2004 with the Gatorade bath. And then you go back to 2005, Middlebury again in a one-goal thriller. Jim Berkman's team has been absolutely tremendous. And then the runs against Cortland. They defeated Cortland not once, but how about twice here at Foxborough in the 1913 game last season. So it is a little bit weird not to see the maroon and gold of Salisbury. Jim Berkman nowhere to be found. It's, uh, it's a little weird, isn't it? It's not to see Salisbury here, I'll tell you. Cortland's probably a little happy not to see Salisbury here at Clark after those two straight defeats, but that Salisbury program is a shot, and it is very strange to be here on this Sunday of Memorial Day weekend in the NCAA Lacrosse Championships and not see Salisbury.